Hi, and welcome to episode one of season four of Hashtag Psychotherapy Unfogged. As you know, I'm Mark Fielding, psychotherapist and relationship counsellor and your host. Um, so at the start of season four, we're going to be picking up a topic which I know our listeners um, <laughs> from previous episodes when I've got a real passion for. Um, so let, let's get into the episode. I'd, I'd like to introduce my guests, um, Robert Fisher and Ali Foster from Hawk and Heath. Um, they are both forest bathing guides with a background in teaching and both share a love of the outdoors. Um, Hawk and Heath is a forest bathing company with a mission to support people in understanding how fundamental nature is to, to our well-being. And can I just add to that, you know, ecotherapy is so important to the whole world, isn't it? And the planet yes. so yeah. it really, really spreads out, you know, much yes. more widely. Yeah. OK, so so let's just kick off um, and I, I, I'll ask you both this. Tell me about personal experiences that kind of led you into this field. Ah, well, yeah, we're both teachers. Um, so we, we both taught, ended up teaching together. We both went to Aberystwyth University. Um, I would like to point out I went to Aberystwyth University. I then did my PGC, PGCE. I then qualified as a teacher NQT and was working at Gomersall First School. And in my second year of working at Gomersall First School, Ali was then born. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do like to say we both um, qualified, you know, and both did our degrees at Aberystwyth University. It is but a generation kind of, of art. Little connection. <laughs> But I was going to say, I mean, I mean, in terms yeah. of Hawk and Heath and in terms of the experience and, you know, the, the kind of difference that you bring. I mean, you both bring, you know, experience from a kind of different age group, really different gender. Yeah, I mean, it, it's great, yeah, yeah. really. It blends, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 She makes me cups of tea and takes me out for a walk every so often and we're fine. <laughs> no, I get, all, I get all the technical jobs. Yeah, yeah that's I get all the tech. technical jobs. <laughs> I, I do the talking. She records it all, sorts it all. Yeah. Because, yeah, we do work both online as well as mm. um, on obviously mm. in person and we're creating our own website on that basis. But that's where it's all stemmed from is this teaching experience and working mm. with um, children and young people up to, you know, really young adults. And we that's where our experience comes from and why we've ended up doing what we're doing so you did teaching and then moved into the outdoors and I did yeah. it the opposite way around I did that I does. went outdoor education first mm. and then went and did my teacher training and got um into the classroom and then back out of the classroom again. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it was and it was yeah. those experiences we've had with um children and working outdoors that made us realize that when we're outdoors we feel better as well so um and we thought well you know that yes there is a there's always room there for children to be outdoors and spend more time outdoors and a big push for it. But also mm. we can't forget that as adults, we still need that connection and that connection with nature is really beneficial mm. for us. So we do still work with children doing our forest bathing as well. We've had um, as young as seven so far. So that's been mm. our youngest. Yeah. yeah. And then um, obviously mo most of our work at the moment is with adults. Yeah. Yeah. And then you both, you know, you both bring kind of your teaching background into Yes. into the work i mean i'm really interested in you know the forest bathing with children i mean again you know i'm just thinking how important really to you know to introduce young people who arguably are really separated from nature because of the you know kind of environment we live in and reintroduce them to a natural environment i mean goodness me that is such important work i mean uh, well, what, what's it like i mean what are your experiences with the younger younger children well we they they have no skepticism yeah. They treat it with absolute joy and you suddenly do work with groups outside. They just love it. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just straight into it. They get the concept of yeah. mental health. They get the concept straight away that stillness, quietness, being gentle, mm -hmm. being aware and just using your senses about what is happening around you. And I think if you can connect with them, they connect with you and then they connect with the world around them. And they absolutely get the very, very simple message that by being and following the different little strategies and well, we call them invitations. So you can engage to the level you're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, you 
see they can feel it you know they, they, they feel that shift from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic they feel and understand absolutely this is good for me yeah I think they love also, the science. I was going to say they really they love, love the science as well. So they really love mm. being able to use those words that they've learned about in the classroom out. So, so we're, we're all of a sudden talking about parts of the body and the nervous system mm. and oxygen and how we breathe, how we should breathe through our noses and things like that. And mm. then they can go, oh, yes, I know. Yeah, you know, what's that thing that we all need to breathe? And they go, yeah, oxygen, mm. it's an oxygen. Where is the oxygen? It's in air, you know. What do the plants need? And, and you know, and then you yeah. can talk about those things. And all of a sudden, a lesson that they've had indoors you can bring it to life outdoors for mm -hmm. them and then you can take it you can you can introduce some more things like about yeah. the nervous system because obviously you mm -hmm. don't really learn about the nervous system when you're seven in the no. national curriculum but um no. but telling them about it and saying that like oh it's that it's the thing that makes you really really excited but then also really really calm mm -hmm. and actually children are really really good at swapping between the two much better than adults are mm -hmm. because they play those kind of games like hide and seek is a great game for it because all of a sudden you're really really excited find hide and space and then you've got to stop and you've got to be still and you've got to be quiet and in terms of evolutionary biology that's what we needed to do when we were hunting when we were fishing yeah. when we were things like that because you have to um if you if you watch how like a dog oh. or a cat they can switch between them really quickly yeah. and that's a skill that we've kind of lost because all of our all of the daily inputs that we're getting I think we read a piece of oh. research didn't we that um prehistoric man would process the same amount of data in a year that we have to process in a day. Yeah, I've read that too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, really staggering. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's the it's the trying to get oh. those little things back. And once you, when you're talking to children about it, they get it because again, that's connected to the stories they're reading and horrible histories and all that kind of thing. And um, yeah. so they so they come at it with a real joy and like a mm. sponginess. They love it. They just take it all in. And the the love of green. And understanding the value of green and being in green spaces and that your eyes see more of green than just about, you know, was it 10 million different 10 shades million. of shades of green? And they just love all of that. And any of those little snippets of information. And then that works through into teenagers because yeah. teenagers, you know, they've been really clobbered, I think, by covid and yeah, they sure. completely Society get that. And social the, the media. pressures and all of it yeah. yeah the social media the first yeah. thing just to put your phone on mute and then put it in a back pocket it's like oh, oh it's like great so we can have this time just quietly gently mm. together and, and we would do so i suppose the way i can describe it is we go through a very structured intervention for those that need that structured intervention and a much freer one obviously with younger children it's mm. got to be a little bit freer and yeah. working through and having a few bonfires etc teenagers totally straight out want to work want to get it get the idea and then learn how to incorporate it into daily life yeah so it's not about you've always got to come out with us in fact yeah quite the opposite you come with us really like once and you you've got a really good um, you know, sort of a forest bathing made easy session. Yeah. You've kind of got, ah, oh, and then I could do, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so every day you can head out and, yeah, I got it. And I've got a garden, brilliant. You've got a garden, so you do that. Yeah. Where could you go? And we work through different green spaces so that they, I suppose, an empowered ownership yeah. that they can then utilize. And the same, you do the same with adults. It's that yeah. same process. I, I don't really, change it if you're 13 or 33 or 93 mm -hmm. there's that same structured intervention but it's all about trying to identify how you can then take away little mm -hmm. ideas from this and then use them in your own day-to-day -day life yeah and, 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 it works wonderfully with yeah. you know with um i suppose it's collaborative isn't it with let's say counselors or coaches or yeah. you know if you're a life coach you can help you know, send them to us and it's Mm -hmm. something that you can then also learn to draw on and help that person and then it's it, it is a pure collaborative process i think with counselors and um, and with what we do yeah or I mean, with doctors and green social prescription and that, and all of that yeah i mean the, i mean i you know i really agree with you i mean i you know i think it's essential i mean 
I, I, you know, I'm fortunate, you know, I live somewhere where I can walk on a nature reserve every day. I walk through an ancient wood every day. And, you know, I can just notice it myself. You know, I can wake up, I can be stressed, you know, my mind can be busy. You know, I get into that natural sure. space and I can just feel my whole nervous system calm down. You know, and, and I guess the, I mean, the mind for just going back to the kind of younger children, I mean, it, when I talk to clients about this, you know, I always bring the mindfulness aspect because I think, you know, you, you, if you're being in nature, even if your mind's busy, you're still going to get the benefits. But I think if if you want to reinforce those benefits, if you can be present moment focused and you can be really kind of, you know, if you, you can be mindful and really, really connecting with what's around you, then that obviously is going to reinforce, you know, the benefits. And, and I guess kids do that much more easily. I guess if you're sick, yeah, we, that's um, your, we... yeah. <laughs> Had a, we had a group in the woods one day, didn't we? And, we, and a, like a mum and a toddler came walking through and we, we were having a moment like looking at, I think we were looking at tree bark or yeah. something like that. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. But the, but the yeah. toddler came through and did exactly the same as what we were doing. But obviously at her eye level, she could see um, lots of spider webs like glistening yeah. in the sunshine and was yeah. asking and, and I couldn't help getting involved. I'm like, oh, mm. can I have a look with you? Because like oh, yeah. you know, they're just, they're yeah. so interested in the world. And I think we forget that, you know, we're even even something simple. Like obviously, there's a there's a benefit to like you say walking through the woodland and say like taking your dog for a walk or whatever. But you're not going to notice the same things as you would when you're trying to keep an eye on your dog yeah. or your children or whatever. So they, yeah. and they they're so curious. I think children that they they can draw you in as well. So yeah. there is a, a benefit to like a, a a walk without necessarily a massive purpose to it. Yeah, yeah. a walk just no. to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah and be more mindful yeah. and be present yeah absolutely. i mean there's a there's, there's a concept in buddhism called beginner's mind i don't know whether you ever heard i mean that that, that yeah, kind of yeah, fits yeah. doesn't it you just show up every day yeah yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's yeah. really it's beautiful, absolutely isn't it? every yeah. time you go in it's got to be like that um but i think also <laughs> so i was up in norham recently and sort of went into the which is up in near berwick upon tweed and when you talk to locals because we my wife and i could walk for hours along the riverbank extraordinary stunning yeah. landscape and you literally meet no one yeah. <laughs> you can wander back in and it's like this isn't an empty place it's a busy mm. space mm. and so we are sort of chatting away in a few of the shops and i go yeah but you kind of get used to it it's it, it's just there so we don't mm. go out into it we don't do that they'll all talk about fishing and they don't actually and it's i think opening up your mind to always have fresh eyes every time you go in yeah still gentle quiet the stillness the gentle and the quietness triggers that shift and mm. i think we need to be encouraging that stillness you, it's not a long hard walk mm. you can incorporate these moments of stillness during your long yeah. walk or when you're out and about and just grabbing those 20 minutes 30 minutes mm. i mean that's that magic length of time to be still to be gentle to be quiet yeah. and just absorb what's around you with no judgment whatsoever yeah and just whatever it is that grabs your attention whether it is the bark whether it's the leaves or is it is it the movement of the branches is it the sound of the water or the birds whatever it is that's grabbing your attention you flow with that yeah and you do that for a 20 to 30 minutes that will have triggered that parasympathetic shift into that parasympathetic response into that side of your nervous system and that shift is really key to then washing out the adrenaline and the cortisol and the noradrenaline and if you shift those out of your system that's fundamentally so good for your health yeah and sure. you can learn to do that and even learn to trigger it at other times when perhaps things are a bit more stressful and yeah. we, we all have those yeah. times and we can be gentle kind to our minds and our bodies and you can just through the images or just through the right sort of thoughts you can trigger that again so it's like mm. training yourself and teaching yourself mm. but you can be empowered to do it yourself mm. um yeah, yeah. If, if, even in a you know a, a local little park and um, you can just wander in or, and that's it when you you can do that at your lunch hour or whatever. Yeah, and then I guess that was one of my other questions, you know, because, I mean, we're fortunate to live, you know, kind of near land where we can do that. But parks work just as well, do they? I mean, if someone lives in an inner city environment, there's yeah, a nice park. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so the key to the the 
benefits to like the immune system and things like that are a, a chemical that the trees give out called phytoncides. Mm-hmm. And they're the same, the same chemical that if you use essential oils, that's the smell of an essential oil. So that's why an essential oil works in the same way as well in aromatherapy. Um, but a tree, they've, they've, they've kind of done some studies on it and the, they've found that they would start to release them in high enough quantities after the age of 10 years old. Mm. So if you think about most of our inner cities areas um, and urban areas, you've at least got some like Victorian parks, quite Mm. in a lot of areas, you know, the mill mill towns and things. And we're talking well over 10 years old there. People will have garden trees that will do that. There'll be hedgerows that are 10 years old. So, um, and Um, obviously we're talking different trees give them out in different quantities Mm -hmm. um, and evergreen trees especially are really really good so and that's actually a lot of landscaping isn't it is evergreen trees so if you can if you can find somewhere um, that's got a leafy tree even in winter then you'll still get these benefits because those evergreen trees will still be producing and giving off those fighting sides Mm -hmm. and um, like if you have a a real Christmas tree yeah you'll be getting enough you'll be getting it in your house as Mm. well for the length of time it can stay yeah. moist so yeah or it's bathing indoors yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and and in terms of the kind of clearing out of you know the um the stress hormones so that would happen even if you're in the park even if you were in your garden I mean, to different levels and degrees yeah so yeah. there's like this the, the stillness element to it and the mindfulness is the bit that after 20 minutes will start to reduce those stress hormones okay what you do when you're sitting under a tree for a longer length of time is you these these fighting sides um are the immune system of the trees mm-hmm. and we because we've evolved to grow in in those environments yeah, of course. it has the same effect on our immune system so if you can spend two hours in a in a woodland that's producing these fighting sides you can have a, a boost to your immune system that they've tracked haven't they and i mm. think the the longest they've found yeah. is about 28 days before it starts to tail back off wow so if you can do two hours every say two weeks mm. then you're going to be boosting your immune system mm. every single time mm. um so if you can lengthen that if you can lengthen that 20 minutes a day to an hour a day mm. then you'll be getting the fight inside element as well as mm. the the cortisol and the you know the adrenaline mm. and stuff like that being reduced so i yeah. mean i have to say i mean that is fascinating you know the, the 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 trees interaction with you know human beings immune system and i guess we shouldn't be surprised i mean you know i mean, if it, I mean our natural place is to be in those kind of environments as hunter gatherers isn't it you know not to be in kind of cities and, and and what have you but it's really fascinating i mean I, I try and keep abreast of some of the research coming out but there's a, i think correct me if this is wrong but you know initially i think a lot of this was research in japan wasn't it in south korea but i'm seeing more and more of oh, it, it's which, all over which is Brilliant. It's worldwide now, yeah. which is really, really good. There's there's yeah. masses of evidence behind it now, and it's yeah. not just the forest bathing, but other but other eco therapies as well. So mm. they've looked at like horse riding and dog walking and like oh. uh, wild swimming and things like that. And so they're mm. they're looking at all of these different types of eco therapies. But obviously, forest bathing is the one which also has, like you said at the beginning, the mindful element. Yeah. So it's the you know it's the, it's the mindfulness combined with the outdoors kind mm. of mm. idea, isn't it? Well, in, because if you go for yeah. a run in a forest, you'll get the fighting sides, but, but obviously but adrenaline that, will be up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah true. Kind of you're like, not yeah. getting yeah. that calmness. Yeah. Um, in Japan, it's sort of started in the 1980s. If you speak to anyone involved in that development, they will actually they openly laugh because they go, oh, look, I'm, "We're really sorry. We started this purely on the basis of common sense." Yeah, um, and he that. said it might be quite extraordinary, but we started on the basis of com- common sense. Dr. Chin Lee, who began all the research, really in around year two thousand ish, came along from China, went to Japan to do part of his um, sort of PhD and studies, and then just went, "What? What is this forest bathing? Shinrin Yoka? What is Shinrin Yoka? I get." The concept you're going to go and where's the data Where, where's the data yeah. and they so, went, for, so for well, 20 we years you know, that japan had been prescribing spent, it yeah. to people to go and calm down and read the book but they didn't have yeah. any data on it because they're like well mm. it's common sense that people feel that but, yeah. <laughs> so he, he... But that shows that disconnect because in japan they they talk about techno stress so we mention anxiety depression and 
burnout. sort of burnout, you know, and the burnouts yeah. that sort of Pete and well, I mean, the government's recently talking about how we need to try and support people in their fifties to stay in work. Mm. Well, it's burnout. Um, it's yeah. techno stress, as they called it, and this this disconnect that they felt people were having in places like Tokyo or London, New York. Yeah. Shanghai, wherever, yeah. they are having a disconnect from nature and would going into nature make you feel better? Mm. And the answer was a resounding yes. Mm. But Dr. Chin Lee's work was then what, what is happening? And this is the fight oh. and sides. And he would get people to sleep in hotel rooms, pumping fight and sides into the room to then see the impact it had on natural killer cells the white blood cells, um, natural killer cells, very good at fighting off infections, et cetera, and also anti-cancer proteins. Um, and he went to some, in, in America, I believe Harvard, Harvard to study anti-cancer proteins in particular. Mm. And it's the fact that, again, if you did Shinrin-yoku, um, so this is a couple of hour type within woodlands, um, that that would give a really good boost to the anti-cancer proteins. And that if you sustain your forest bathing practice, you sustain the levels of it. But he's very keen to also emphasize this 20 to 30 minutes for his phrases, it washes out adrenaline, cortisol, or noradrenaline. Because, yeah. of course, a lot of our health issues leading to burnout and techno stress yeah. actually relate to the stress hormones. Yeah. Wash them out, then that should reduce. But also, hopefully, 20 to 30 minutes in your local park, you understand these very gentle, mm. very slow, preferably almost still, mm. very quiet, absorbing, using all of your senses, mm. different activities that mm. we go through in a lot of detail as online as well as face-to-face -face in, in person, that those things are having such a profound impact that that's where we start. Mm. And then hopefully it generates a greater nature connection. Yeah. Because I wish everyone had a an ancient woodland literally next door. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously it's not that long ago when we mm. would have done, you know. I mean, it's, no, no, no. A blink of an done. eye really in terms yeah, of yeah. In history, geological yeah. terms, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We, we've caused this fundamental change. But most of us would know where a woodland is yeah, probably yeah. somewhere. We may have to get on the bus or travel a bit, but we could go to something like a good woodland for a couple of hours every you know, couple of weeks, you know, day off a weekend, a family trip out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but our green spaces in our cities are perfectly adequate for this washing out of mm. the stress hormones. Mm. So we, we come at it as a two sort of pronged approach mm. and hopefully we get greater nature, nature connection. And I think the Wild Isles program, I hope will people will, you know, the David Attenborough wonderful oh, yeah, BBC program. Wow, um, yeah. You know, there's five sort of episodes and there's yeah. this sixth one, which is a documentary, I think all about what we can do. Mm. And I think, if we can engage in activities that one, oh, actually, we feel a lot better and we can feel that. And in Japan, the Shinrin-yoku system was very much about being tested beforehand. And then you go around, yeah. you do your two hours, come back and be tested again. We haven't really got that structure here yet. I'm sure it will come. But if we did, you begin to, people could definitely go, right, this is doing me good. Mm -hmm. So you're going to feel much more ownership to those places and spaces. Yeah. yeah. Feel more ownership. You feel more connection. You know it, how much it's doing, not only for you, let's think about the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. Think yeah. about our kids and all of that. Get them out, spend that time, join the scouts, go and do all, yeah. whatever it is, go out and do your family camps. And mm. you'd suddenly feel that. And I think we would, that nature connection could then be of a real value to us collectively yeah. as a society. So, you know, there's that long-term hope, isn't there? That message of hope yeah. that this burnout, this stress, these stress-related illnesses, and also the beauty of what we can bring yeah. to our country as a whole. Yeah. And he talks about it being a one of the most, that Britain is one of the most nature-depleted countries 
in the world. Wow, and that is, it brings you cut up short because, of course, we all go, oh, isn't it beautiful? Our, our countryside is it green and pleasant land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we've kind of yeah. said a story to ourselves. Mm. And we talk a lot about stories and how stories can, and in nature, natural stories and bringing stories in. But we, we've been telling ourselves a false story. Yeah, for a while, and we need yeah. to wake up to that full story. Yeah, and see the value of these spaces. That we need to spend time with them. We need to connect with them, and we need to protect them and develop them and enhance mm. them. Yeah, and, and and I guess really resonating with what you know with what you're both saying effectively. You know, I, I guess connect. You know, reconnecting. You know, the younger generations with nature. You know, one would hope that over time that would influence mm-hmm. government policy and more rewilding. I mean, it's already started in some aspects, isn't it? Yes. More rewilding will continue and the whole thing will be self-reinforcing, you know, and really yes. kind of affect the planet. I mean, that, you know, this is why I think this area is so important because, you know, the more this area spreads out across the world, you know, looking th- the next couple of generations, one would hope that that would really, really change the way that humans yes. interact with nature, i.e., you know not very well and that's a massive understatement of course isn't it yeah. but yeah. let me ask you a bit about the business um t- tell us a bit about the business tell us about how people can get get in touch with you what you what you both offer yeah we have um obviously for our in person then um, through our website um at hawkenheath.co.uk you'll kind of see there's two elements to it we have an online learning platform which we're developing and expanding and pretty much every week we're putting new things on and hopefully by the end of may there's a couple of exciting little projects we're involved in um to do with sit spot which is a particular type of therapeutical technique and also forest bathing indoors and then hopefully people will see as they go on the kind of value is that because we're teachers and we've been used to training people yeah. how to do things from reading and maths, et cetera. We want to train people how to engage in the woodlands and how to engage in their parks and the canals and engage in green spaces, which can also be your garden if you're lucky enough to have one. Yeah. So our online learning platform is obviously not everyone can come to Ilkley. I wish they could up in West Yorkshire and spend some time directly with us or Leeds or Sheffield or wherever yeah. you happen to be, we can move around. Yeah. But we, we we would hope the online learning platform becomes that way that people can access forest bathing, understand its impact, yeah. watch the videos, get a good idea of what to do, go out, have a practice, and then maybe after that engage with a local forest bathing guide because you've got yeah. a good understanding of what it's about. Yeah. And then... From that, we obviously have our face-to-face, which we work with lots of people, whether that's structured interventions, because that's what's necessary, GSPs and all of that, Mm -hmm. or whether we do the more fluid um, team building, enjoying enjoying yourself, add a bit of bushcraft in and all of this Mm -hmm. sort of exciting things. Mm -hmm. But it's all there on our website. So we're we're normally, we're based in Ilkley, but... um... In West Yorkshire, but we can travel. So we, we'll do corporate groups. We've had charities come to us and ask for mm. groups. We've had youth youth clubs who want mm. to come and do stuff. We've done scouts and guides, haven't we? Yeah. Um. Uh. Adult. Um. Like hobby kind of co- What would you call them? Yes. Like community, ad- community groups. groups. Yeah, yeah. Community um, groups. That community groups. Things like yeah. That. yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, so but we're really very aware that like getting a group of people together these days where everybody's yeah. busy is is quite yeah. difficult. So we do offer one to ones. Um, that could be online because once you once you know what you need to be doing, then you can go off and do it. And that's yeah. actually based more on like the Japanese model because they you wouldn't be expected to go to a forest bathing guide every week. They have forests set up where mm. once you've learned how to do it, you go off and you do it. And oh, then you <laughs> then you do yeah. it yourself. Yeah. So yeah. we're all about teaching it. So that's where that's where the online stuff comes in. So if you if you can't get to us or we can't get to you, then there is everything on there that you need that you can teach yourself how to like DIY mm. yourself a forest bathing mm. session. Yeah. Um and we've 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 tried to price that really reasonably at £45 for a lifetime membership. Yeah, wow, and that's great. Because, yeah. yeah, because we want 
Yes, because, it's, well, it's, it's, to be fair yeah, as well, yeah. in this cost of living crisis, yeah. nature is still free. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you just if you just have a little bit of an investment to learn how to forest bathe, you can go and do it yourself for free. Mm. <laughs> you know, but but yeah. again, what you get what the benefit of coming to us first is that we know how to explain, and we we have a love of reading those big meaty research documents yeah, and, yeah, and then telling too. it to other people yeah. um because we both had our, our science backgrounds aren't we our degrees are yeah. science based mm -hmm. so um we just and we like teaching and telling other people how to do it and spreading the knowledge really mm -hmm. that's what we want to do spread the knowledge yeah. the get key, everybody to do it the key is empowerment yeah 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 absolutely and we I, want to empower you to help you yeah. And not, you know, not this idea. Oh, yeah, you've got to come back to us again and again and again and again. And that, we yeah. don't want that. We want absolutely. I, I feel strong enough, capable enough. I'm empowered mm. to yeah. help me, and then help your families, and then your community groups, yourself as well. That might take one session. It might yeah. take three sessions. It might take yeah. looking at all of our videos, yeah. but because everybody's different. But it, yeah. you know, that's what we want to do. And and also, um, I think there's this element of. Just because we like being outside in nature doesn't mean we have to completely forget and ostracize technology as well, because there right. are benefits to technology. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're, I mean, we're doing but, this yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> about, yeah. You know, getting the message out. And sometimes with young people as well, you've got you you need to meet them. Well, actually, adults as well who are set in their yeah. ways, you've got to meet them where they are. Yeah. So if yeah. if it takes a teenager to be going around and taking pictures for their Instagram or doing mm -hmm. videos for their TikTok, but they're still outside and they're breathing in fighting sides, mm -hmm. if that's what has to happen for the first session, mm -hmm. that's what has to happen. That's absolutely fine. And then once once they're into it, they'll get more confident in, do you know what, I'm going to put my phone down for a bit. Yeah. And then I'll, you know, and it's, and it's meeting people where they are rather than enforcing everything mm -hmm. as well, because... That I think that's another thing that comes from being a teacher is you've got yeah. to be dynamic and you've got yeah. to deal with whoever's in front of you because yeah. everybody's different and everybody learns differently. Mm. Um, so I think that's another thing that we yeah. we bring to the table is it's not a, it's not a set menu. No, it's it isn't. a cart. It is. <laughs> yeah, which which I really love. I mean, about the business. I mean, and the reach. You know, the fact that you offer you know online sessions that you know people can come and they can learn how to forest bathe and they can go off and then they can you know take that knowledge into into nature and that knowledge you know will be with them for the rest of their life i mean it i think it's fantastic i mean the reach is really really great and the layers of the business and the mm -hmm. mission statement you know teaching people to go out and enjoy nature i mean it's all really wonderful i think yeah and it must be such a joy for you both i mean when you when you see okay. especially when you kind of work with people who have not been in nature much and then oh. they yeah. get out and it is the awe, you know, I mean, sometimes you can be in nature and it's so awe-inspiring, isn't it? And you see that. Exactly, yeah. It yeah. must be wonderful, yeah. And obviously, so nice for you both to be, you know, yeah. working in nature the whole time. I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, <laughs> all, 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 all of the links we'll, we'll obviously put on our social media, on a social media platform. So if anyone wants to get in touch for, you know, any of the things that, that you offer, get in touch you know we put the website details on they can go on the website they can have a look yeah and i mean the other thing to mention is it is just us so if you want to send us a message on yeah. instagram or whatever then we're going to reply wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it's yeah. us, so you're not going to get like the chatbot yeah. or anything like that you know we, yeah if, we're, if you've got a we're question. on linkedin as well but yeah. obviously yeah. robert fisher ali send. and it's hawk and heath as well hawk so and yeah and we're instagram and we are youtube you name it we're, um, we're all there hiding we're there streaming a very very simple message yeah. yeah yeah a very simple but an incredibly important yeah message i mean i, I could talk to you both about this for, forever but i know we're kind of approaching the end of the show well i ask all of our guests at the end of the show their favorite coping strategy for good mental health and it seems a bit of a redundant conversation a question really considering that's what we've been talking about but i'm going to ask it anyway I mean, what 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 I mean, what what do you both do every day? You know, to to ensure kind of good mental health. What do you think? My yeah, if this is where I think when you start talking to people, what is it that draws your attention? What is it yeah. that you love? For me, I I love movement, it, and I don't know what it is, but it's if you see like animals flitting around or following following the robin and where the robin goes. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually looking at this time of year, almost now, we haven't quite got, so you can still get this, which is with trees. And you go and look at a tree and you look at the tree at the moment, they haven't got their leaves. So we're at that point where you yeah. can see all the different patterns 
that the branches make as you follow up. And what I particularly love is looking at the tops of trees and the branches there, and you get what are, are actually mathematical fractal patterns. Mm. But what I love about that is when you look at the shapes of those trees, there's almost something brain-like about them. So there's a link into my inside and what's happening in the tree. Yeah. And then if you then look at things like the Hubble Space Telescope mm. or the new JW yeah, Telescope yeah. and the sort of p pictures you, you get of like these, well, we know they're light years, mm. massive light yeah. years wide thing. And you suddenly, oh, it's the same fractal patterns. Yeah. So you're seeing a connection from galaxies down to trees down to what I know is happening in my mind or lungs, if you think about yeah. the shape of it. It's that love of pattern and the movement you get within those patterns. And I know it's a connection from me to those trees and then out into the galaxy yeah. everywhere. It's yeah. across our universe, all these links. Yeah. And you just, every so often, that's what, yeah, that's what gets to me. Yeah, that's really beautiful. You know, the connect. I mean, this words kind of fall down really in describing that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the kind of the, I don't know the oneness of of everything really. I yeah. mean, that's a bit of a kind of religious way to look at it. But yeah, I mean, it's really oh, really no, beautiful. No. Yeah, I mean, what, yeah. What, what, what 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 would you say, Ellie? Um. Well, I've uh, I've come from a background of um uh, depression, clinical depression, and yeah. um being being medicated for quite a while, and then after starting this business being able to come off that medication. And one of the things I like to do is when I am outside, I do have my phone out quite a lot because I like to take pictures yeah. so that if I do have one of those days where my brain is having a bad day, I call them bad brain days, yeah. um, <laughs> when uh, I can look back at those things and it encourages me to go back outside. Yeah. So it's, it's like a little reminder to myself about how I felt mm. on that good day yeah. so that I can feel it on a bad day. So I would do that. I wouldn't, I... I do take pictures of stuff and get my phone out and yeah. things like that and then look through them and hmm. yeah. So yeah. Actually, that would be my tip yeah. is, to, is try and take me. try and yeah. take something from your good days into your bad days that's that's tangible yeah. that you can still hold on to. Because I think hmm. when you're in that dark place, you can uh, there's not much to hang on to and not much yeah. to grasp at. So if you can give yourself something to grasp yeah. at before you slip completely away yeah. <laughs> into, into the darkness mm. then yeah but yeah, yeah anyway that's a, I could actually talk about depression for days yeah it's got funny no. ways of describing things but yeah and um, that's how I, that's mm. what I would do is take take some for your mental health on a good day try yeah, and just... take it with you mm. into your into your bad in your bad ones mm. yeah what yeah I think I think that's fantastic I mean I just just in, in finishing I do a kind of similar thing myself I mean I spend a lot of time in nature being mindful you know but if I see something like you know just the other day I saw like a beautiful spider's web and it was you know it was kind of frosty Ooh. I take yeah. a picture of that you know and you they, these kind of images are all inspiring if you wake up in the morning yeah. and you're having a bad day you can look at it and it just connects you so it's a yeah really really that, that's a really really nice way to end the show but listen, I want to thank you both so much it's been a really interesting show and it's going to be great for our listeners real mix of science you know kind of personal histories and you know and anyone that wants to get in touch please go on the website and go on any of our social media sites and they can get in touch so thank you both so much for coming thank on you. the show thank you thank you very much okay. wonderful